So we're here making some compost extract where we've taken two different kinds of compost, a Johnson Sumix, and you can look that up online, as well as an aerated static pile compost that we made from our um, the bedding pack of an orga organic dairy bedding pack barn. And we've taken the compost and we've placed it in nylon mesh bags and we're bubbling both in the bags and in the tote itself. We'll do that for about a half an hour and then our extract is done. So it's a very quick process. Um, you know, hour later you've got a couple totes worth 250, 500 gallons, two 250 gallon totes of extract ready to go. We're using it at about two pounds of compost per acre. So in this 250 gallon tote and our four nylon men's spades, we have about 50 pounds. So that's good for about 25 acres. Some have gone as low as one pound per acre and even lower, but we're going on the high side because we want to see if we get any benefit here. This is, of course, being used on organic farmland. So will we see a benefit, as much of a benefit as guys out west that are conventional farming? I'm not sure, but we're. this is our first year, and if we don't get it right this year, we'll try again next year. So in contrast to compost extract, there's also compost tea. The process essentially starts out the same, where you have a tote <coughs> filled with water, and a bag of compost, in that case, it's maybe a 25 pound bag of compost in a nylon mesh bag. The bag, the bag and the water gets bubbled for about three hours or so, maybe six hours, and then I'll pull the bag out. In addition, we're also adding fish hydrolysate, preferably with chitosan, so that's um, the shells of sea creatures. If you look up uh, Dr. Elaine Ingham, she says that fish hydrolysate with chitosans is actually the best. And we're using our blackstrap molasses. Um, that's unsulfurated blackstrap molasses. So we add those two foods into the mix in order to feed the microbial population. So <clears throat> Uh, as an aside, I'm thinking about um, fungal hyphae. So when you grow a really good compost tea, you have lots of different bacterium, of course, and then you've got um, your different protozo protozoas, flagellates, amoebas, um, ciliates, and you've got some nematodes and so on. But in order to feed that microbial community, you have to add food to that. Um, the last and that's the, your fish oil and your sh sugars. But the last um, component you would like to build up in your teas is um, fungal hyphae. Now that is incredibly hard to do. Again, chitosan in your fish hydrolysate is supposed to be helpful for that, but there's other tricks that you can do, like increasing the amount of fish oil. You can take oats and grind oats and then add a little bit of sugar and water to it and let that steep for a day or so in order to start building up fungal hyphae and then add that to your bag along with your compost tea. We've tried it all. We've tried also different ingredients like um, peat moss and different types of um, rock powders and so on. It is hard to get hung of fungal hyphae. So we if we get them, great. We always get a little bit, <laughs> but I <clears throat> primarily shoot for a nice, um, population of flagellates and we're good to go. I consider that ready to go. So um, after that brews for, like I said, three or four hours with the bag in there, I pull the bag out and then I just let it bubble. And depending on the temperature, and, the, and first of all, the starting temperature of the water as well as the ambient temperature outside, that can take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours and sometimes a little bit longer. As the process goes along, you'll get a nice foamy action on the top, but that actually is not always indicative of what's of um, whether or not the tea is ready. You actually need a microscope and you need to learn a bit of it about microscopy in order to 
look at your solution and see what's actually going on in there. But like I said, 24 to 48 hours later, we now are able to successfully produce a nice, a really nice bloom of our protozoa. And that then gets applied onto the plants. Now, we have tried using compost tea um, when we were farming hemp and um, it worked reasonably well at controlling, for example, white powdery mildew, which we have an issue here with in Wisconsin. But in terms of yield and improving yield, last year we tried spraying um, our compost tea on some of our cornfields and did not see a benefit like we had hoped for. Now, I do know that there is a one large farm, of at least one large farm down in Illinois, where for their, ver for their compost, they're actually making their own vermicompost, which is worm compost, and they're using that. So it's much more, in fact, that's what we use too. And they're having success with that. They are brewing a compost tea and they are having success with it. And they are foliar spraying it. So what their recipes and stuff, I haven't really pursued it because I think the extract is a lot simpler and easier way to go. And from what we've read and heard from talking with other farmers, the benefit is just phenomenal. So my current thinking is Extract is great for um, emergence, yield, and overall plant health. But compost tea can be good for those plants that are subject to, for example, white powdery mildew or fungal issues, or even to a lesser degree pest issues, although I think primarily for fungal issues. So yeah, that's the basic differences between extract and a compost tea.